starting in with later reports coming in saying that Russian forces captured the southeastern Ukrainian city of Melitopol. This is according to reports by Russia's Interfax news agency. This comes as Moscow launched coordinated cruise missile and artillery strikes on several cities including Kiev. Authorities in Kiev said that a missile hit a residential building. There are no confirmed reports of casualties here. Once again, letting our viewers know that uh, Russian forces have captured the southeastern Ukrainian city of Melitopol. This is according to reports by Russia's Interfax news agency. And this news comes as Moscow launched coordinated cruise missile and artillery strikes on several cities, including the capital, Kiev. Authorities in the capital have said that a missile hit a residential building. There are no confirmed reports on the casualties yet. Now, these are the live visuals that we're getting right now. Uh, as per reports, Russian forces have captured the southeastern uh, Ukrainian city of Melitopol. This is according to reports by Russia's Interfax news agency. Moscow launched coordinated cruise missile and artillery strikes on several cities, including the capital, Kiev. Authorities in Kiev said a missile hit a residential building. As of now, there are no reports on uh, the number of casualties, if any. Now, it's the third day of Russian invasion of Ukraine. The fight is now focused on the capital of Kiev. Series of explosions rattled through the city of three million. The intense clash has followed, was followed after the Ukrainian army repulsed a Russian attack in the main Kiev Avenue. The Victory Avenue is in the western part of the city where authorities have claimed that Russia targeted an army base. Artillery rounds, intense gunfire were heard in the region. In a separate operation, local agency claims that Russian troops were trying to capture one of the city's electricity generating stations. This comes hours after Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky warned that Russian troops will try to storm into Kiev overnight. Now, reportedly, Washington offered to help evacuate the Ukrainian president, but he's refused to flee from his country and has insisted that he will continue to fight on. <laughs> Ukrainians. Now for more on this, we on correspondent Julia Chapman is joining us live from Russian city of Rostov. Julia, thank you for joining us. Can you bring us up to speed with what is happening in terms of the Russian military operations? Like we mentioned right now, as per the latest reports, uh, Russian forces have captured the southeastern Ukrainian city of Melitopol. What more can you tell us? That is what is being claimed by the Russian Ministry of Defense, as quoted by Russian state news agencies, but it hasn't been confirmed independently. Indeed, some doubt has been cast on that claim, but there is certainly an effort now uh, by the Russian Navy uh, to come up from the Black Sea. We have been seeing uh, reports of missiles being launched from the Black Sea into Ukrainian territory. This comes on top of the fierce fighting that you mentioned around the capital, Kiev, uh, with one uh, missile reportedly striking a residential building. There were photos 
shared of a damaged apartment building in the city uh, by uh, the, the photos were shared by uh, Russian, uh, by Ukrainian rather, uh, government officials, including Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba. Uh, it isn't clear yet whether there were any casualties from that attack, but certainly we are seeing that there is evidence against by the Russian Ministry of Defense that they are only targeting military infrastructure. There have been residential areas hit. There have been civilian casualties, uh, mm. but the Ukrainian government is fighting back harder than many had expected them to be able to do. Uh, and we are seeing fierce clashes now in many areas of the country. Right, absolutely. Now, as per um, Ukrainian President Zelensky's one that Kiev may be stormed overnight by Russian troops, what can we expect in the hours to come? Certainly, we can expect uh, fiercer fighting as the Russian military uses all the tools at its disposal. We haven't really seen yet uh, a full assault at the level of what Russia is capable of inflicting. They seem to be saving uh, some of the tools in their arsenal for mm. later strikes. Uh, we don't know why that is, but certainly it was expected that they would be able to take at least one major city in the first couple of days of fighting. That has not been the case. Uh, they have been held off relatively successfully uh, by the Ukrainian government. Uh, right. Not, of course, without casualties on both sides. There is no clarity from the Russian military as to how many losses there have been. Uh, there is a claim from the Ukrainian government that there are uh, 3,500 Russian military deaths. Experts say that's probably unlikely. It's, it's likely to be a bit lower than that. Uh, but undoubtedly, there is fierce fighting. There are casualties on both sides. And this is mm. expected to continue in the days and weeks to come. Right. Also, let's just also talk about the situation on ground in uh, Russia. Now, people have taken to the streets in support of Ukraine. What can you tell us about that? There have been uh, a series of protests uh, around Russia on th uh, Thursday evening. 51 cities across the country held relatively small protests. They were bigger in the biggest cities like Moscow and St. Petersburg. Uh, but of course, we saw the police immediately clamp down on any attempt to show dissent against this move. There are many Russians uh, that have been arrested, uh, particularly in the two biggest cities. On the first day of protests, 1,800 people arrested. Last night, over 600 people arrested. Uh, it is very difficult for Russian people to show any opposition to the steps their government is taking. But undoubtedly, there are a lot of them that are very unhappy about this move. They want to see their government stop attacking their neighbor. Right, absolutely. Julia, thank you so much for joining us with all the updates on that. Now, Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky has said that the Western partners are sending weapons to Ukraine. He added that he spoke to his French counterpart Emmanuel Macron on phone. Zelensky tweeted that a new day on the diplomatic front line began with a conversation with Macron and weapons and equipment are on their way. An anti-war coalition is working. This is the third day of Russian invasion in Ukraine. Russian forces are closing in on Kiev.